Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to the From the Depths Army Tutorial Part 1 of whatever. Because uh, as it turns out, this is a particular topic in this game that is quite big, quite complex, and there's a lot to talk about. So this is probably going to be the first video of probably two videos, maybe even three, depending on uh, what we have to cover. And incidentally, if there's... Uh, I will lay out what I'm going to cover in this video and others, which I'll do right now. So this first video is going to be about the basics of armor in From the Depths and how it works. And also what kind of materials are good for what kind of armor, uh, how armor stacking works. And also, and this is something that's cropped up in the comments a fair bit, uh, how to arrange armor blocks. So whether to have, if you're using 4 meter beams, whether it's horizontal, vertical, or cross-hatching. So you have alternating uh, layers of, of beams oriented vertically or hor and horizontally. So today's video is going to be on that. The next one is going to basically be a little bit of a tour of a fortress that a Wilner has so kindly provided for me. Thanks, a Wilner. And just uh, how slopes work and how armor air gaps work and all that kind of stuff. But for today, we're going to start with the basics. And so the first question is, how does armor in From the Depths work? Well. There is a formula which is going to be put on screen right now, uh, future me don't forget to do that, explaining how armor works and looking at what I've written here, I'm awful at math, I don't really know what that means, but for the basic thing to take away for those of you who are, well, as bad as math at, no, as, bad at math as I am and who also are feeling lazy, it is in order to do for any form of damage to do full damage to a block in this game, the armor penetration value, the AP, must be double that of the armor class, the AC. So if we go into our build menu here, here's a wood block. It's got an armor of three, which isn't much, but for a, say, a kinetic uh, advanced cannon round to do full damage to this block, it needs to have an AP value of at least six, okay? So that's how that works. Uh, anything, an armor penetration value of anything less than three will not do full damage. So if we go over to our shell here, let's illustrate that. This this is a, we're gonna be shooting at uh, this uh, rather conspicuous looking gun a little bit later. And this is a monster of an armor penetration round. So this is kind of stupid actually. So the kinetic damage is 40,917, armor pierce is 21, so this will do full damage to a metal block or a metal beam. But however, if it runs up against something with higher armor than this, say a heavy armor block, it will not do full damage. In fact, heavy armor has an armor, armor class of around 40, this has 21, so this will do... Ah, and this is where, like, I'm a little bit rusty on how it works. This will do about half damage, which is still a lot of kinetic damage. And I guess in... I guess I will have to do a video covering, like, the armor busting and how best to do it. Uh, kinetic damage is very important for that. This is really important. This is only slightly less important, but enough about that. So, on to that. That's how armor works. Basically, high armor value is good. The higher that is, the less damage you take. It's pretty standard across most video games. And I have come up with a formula for determining what material you should make your craft out of, depending on what you're trying to go for. There's many things to consider when building a craft. Armor is one of them, but there's also things like cost, weight, uh, susceptibility to EMP, and all that kind of stuff. So you have a number of blocks available to armor your craft with, so what should you use? So I have come up with a formula by myself, and it's not a foolproof one, but it does give you a good general idea over the more efficient, not effective, the most efficient materials to use for building a craft out of. And this isn't just armor, this is just structural materials. And so, Keeping in mind this is not a foolproof formula and doesn't uh, always 100% reflect like how would you you'd use like certain materials. Here you go. So I'm gonna put it on screen right now. It is the armor class times well it's health plus
plus of a block, plus buoyancy, plus protective drainage for EMP, minus weight and minus EMP susceptibility, times armor class divided by material cost. So uh, that's that should be up screen right now. Shouldn't have to explain that too much. And this is a pretty decent formula for working out what's an efficient kind of block and what isn't. Mostly because it reflects what I already know about uh, efficiency of blocks. So let's start off with what's the... we're gonna work from the bottom. So over here in this disgraceful corner is the stuff you pretty much never want to use for armor. And yes, this is an applique panel. Uh, don't talk to me about applique panels. They're even ignoring the fact that they are meant to have special properties they don't have. They are useless because they're score for uh, using this formula so again it's health plus buoyancy plus protective drainage minus weight and minus EMP susceptibility all of that times the result you get from that times armor class divided material cost these panels have a rather horrible rating of 48.69 whereas most other materials have well over 500 and over here is lead and someone said in the comments not too long ago interesting chance to make an entire ship out of lead. I would not suggest you do that because, well, I should probably show the stats of these things. So the health of applique panel is health 200, armor 3, weight 4, material cost 14, zero susceptibility to EMP, protective drainage of 5, and a buoyancy of plus 11.1. .1. So that's that. It is like flimsy and light and pretty useless. Lead is deliberately heavy. So health of well, this beam, I'm just going to work with beams for now because if you want to know single blocks, you just divide this by four. Health of 1,800, armor of four, weight 800, material cost 12, relative buoyancy of what of minus 634.8. So lead has the lowest score of any block simply because it's like so so heavy and like has such crap buoyancy. It is got a score of negative 78.27 so in terms of most of what you want to make a craft out of never use lead for that this and that's fine because this has a very specific purpose this is used for keels and balancing a craft it is not meant to be used as armor like never it's got a higher armor rating than wood and that's about it and so yeah so that's two things you never want to use then you have glass and glass is an interesting block because it's see-through and cameras can see through it as well it is rubbish armor uh, it doesn't benefit at all from armor stacking like i'll get to that in a little bit how that works and the stats are crap health of 360 armor of one weight of 40 zero susceptibility to emp protective drainage 100 and a relative buoyancy of plus 110.8. So this stuff actually floats, which is weird because glass is rather infamous in uh, real life for not floating. And, well, this has an efficiency score of 177.7. So still very bad. These are the three things that, like, these are just disgraceful, which is understandable for glass and lead because... They're, they have specific functions, and they're not meant to be used as armor. Applique panels, just, they should be in the decorations tab. They really shouldn't be here, and they shouldn't be nearly as expensive as they are, because they are really crap and useless. Okay, so onwards, working over here. So these are the real things you want to work with. If you have wood, stone, metal, light alloy, heavy armor, and reinforced wood, which was just added to the game not so long ago, and it is wonderful stuff. I really like it. But that's a side tangent, so what is the most efficient out of these real armor blocks to use? Well, we'll start from the bottom. The least uh, efficient of this, these six is, surprisingly, light alloy. It's got... You just go over here, it has a 4 meter beam, has a health of 1560, 1560, armor class of 13, weight of 20, material cost of 20, and it's got the highest buoyancy of anything in this game. It has plus 130.4 so this is this is actually it is at least at first glance it is wonderful stuff it is reasonably tough armor class 13 is pretty good like to give you an idea of uh what's likely to be shot at you i can't remember what explosive damage the armor the ap value of explosive damage is but for fragments across the board the armor rating is six so this takes less than half damage from fragments, which is 
very good because fragments will ruin your life, if, especially if your armor isn't that good. So why has it got the lowest score of all this? Well, it's hard to say. Its score is 747.76, so still a good score for structural efficiency. The reason that I think it has like a lower score than anything else is because its health and armor isn't... Its health, armor, and buoyancy and weight just isn't quite enough to make up for the fact that it's pretty expensive. It costs the same as, as metal. So yeah, like light alloy is best used for things you, well, you want to keep light and you don't mind being a little bit more expensive. And stuff which absolutely needs to float. So think of this as supercharged wood in how you should use it. Good for aircraft, good for light, fast things. If you want something genuinely tanky, there is much more efficient materials to use, especially if you don't particularly care about moving fast. Or b mainly gaining altitude. This stuff is great for airships and planes and things like that. So that's light alloy. It is, uh, out of these nine materials, it's uh, sitting at number six. So what's number five? And again, a surprise, I didn't think this would be, like, I thought this would be much lower. It's heavy armor. And heavy armor has made a huge impact on the way this game is played ever since it was first implemented. Mainly because, well, it is really heavy and it's really, really strong. So, what are the stats for a 4 meter beam? It's health of 6,000, armor of 40, which is just way, way higher armor than pretty much anything else, any other block in this game, structural or not. Weight of 800, so this weighs as much as lead does. Material cost of 100 for a 4 meter beam, so that is like very already it is very very tough, very very heavy, very very expensive and really terrible buoyancy, so uh, negative 634.8 and EMP susceptibility 100% which means EMP does full damage to these blocks and that's that is important, it's the main thing stopping this from being an overpowered form of structural block and protective drainage of one which means that if an emp charge i should have mentioned that earlier protective drainage is the damage lost when an emp charge surges through a block so it's a little bit like it's a weirdly like armor but specifically for emp so if an emp surge goes through this it'll do well heavy armor just tends to absorb most of it but say if it does, well, surge protectors are actually the best uh, example of this. So protective drainage, zero. Uh, damage reduction, 90%. Well, that's a terrible example, actually. So protective drainage, 100. If a EMP charge passes through a rubber block, and good luck with that, uh, it'll lose 100 damage, or so, I think. So, and it won't go very far. So you'll need a monster... Uh, EMP surge to get through things like rubber, wood, stone, and like other things that don't conduct electricity very well. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so back to heavy armor. So, heavy armor has an overall efficiency score of, well, quite a bit up from alloy. It's 867.68, and mostly just due to the, like, the sheer amount of health and armor it has, which kind of balances out how much it costs and how much it weighs. But this is... Like a very common trap for people is to use too much heavy armor in their designs, and I'm saying that I have multiple times attempted to make almost entire ships out of heavy armor just to see what happened. It most of the time fails miserably because the thing is very heavy and expensive, and heavy armor is so tough that if there's any gap in a layer of heavy armor, it just it's just a hole is made very quickly simply because it's so much tougher than materials. Uh, well, then weaker materials next to it is that they are long gone and this thing holds on and then it fails as armor because there's a big gap right next to it. Say, wood gap, wood thing right here, uh, explosive shell hits here, takes off the wood, and then there's a nice hole right in the cloth and this thing is essentially very expensive uh, decoration that's very heavy. So, these things are, and ignoring the fact this entire fortress is made out of heavy armor, that's, I just, I kind of like the way it looks, this, uh, hexagonal pattern right here. This is good for armor and critical points inside a craft, so stuff you absolutely do not want to get destroyed ever, even if the entire exterior of your ship is gone. So it's good for ammo caches, 
and AI compartments and just like lay thinner layers of heavy armor around like engine rooms for very big expensive craft. So this is like very very heavy armor is a little bit like expensive spices in cooking. The it's more effective the less you use of it. So yeah, and it also the fact that it absorbs EMP means it's actually pretty decent EMP defense even though it gets damaged by it. So an EMP surge say hitting this heavy armor deck will just immediately get absorbed by one block and it won't travel very far so it's pretty good for shielding EMP vulnerable stuff like I said before like uh, AI mainframes AI components and all that but don't go overboard with it because it is very expensive very heavy okay so what's next uh, up the list of structural efficiency stuff well it's our favorite wood now wood is the most basic material in the game it is the cheapest material in the game and it's just it's actually my favorite material simply because it's cheap it's versatile it's uh it floats and, it, and I, I like the way it looks wood looks very good in this game i think it's one of the prettiest blocks by far so why is it number four on this uh, structural list why does it have a structural efficiency rating of borderwise approved uh, 893.1, just a little bit higher than heavy armor. Well, if we look at the stats of this thing, it's got health of 1080 for a 4 meter beam, uh, not particularly high, decent, not incredibly bad, but uh, still not very high. Armor of 3, which is rubbish, uh, so fragments do full damage to wood, so if you're up against frag spamming things, try not to use wood. Wood does not do the trick. Weight of 40, so... Eh, not very, not particularly heavy, and not particularly light either. So wood isn't re very good for making aircraft or anything that flies, unless you really want to keep the cost down. Material cost of four, which is really cheap, like really, really cheap. Like wood is one of the few things in this game where the smaller blocks are half material cost. So downslope because this is half a single wooden block. This is. Well, it is 0.5 materials. It is very, very cheap. That's the main virtue of wood, is that it is very cheap. So, if you want to need blocks in your craft, which are probably not ever going to get shot at, uh, wood is the way to go, simply because it's so cheap, costs you almost nothing. But back to here, so health, armor, weight, material, EMP susceptibility 0%, so it's not damaged by EMP. And protective range 100, so again, this is... Uh, Wood is very good EMP defense. It's not it's not perfect because EMP still passes through wood. It just doesn't get very far because protective drainage is 100. You need a serious EMP drill to get through multiple layers of wood, but they exist. You have been warned. And the buoyancy is plus 110.8. So this stuff floats. Well, it's it's wood. It's meant to it floats quite well. So this is the stuff that you make cheap floaty things out of so basic starter ships and good for decks if you layer it and put other things uh, behind it but uh, we'll get to the what deck armor should be in probably not even in this video so stay tuned for that so that's that's wood it's cheap it's disposable it is it floats and it's pretty i like it so what's next so Number three, suitably enough, on this list, with a score of 909, is way over here. It's reinforced wood. Recently added block, and this is basically pandering to the people who like to have... who like the look of wooden decks, but they hate the fact that wood is essentially cardboard. So, reinforced wood is... well, wood. It's a single block that is... the idea is it's wood backed by metal, and uh, lots of historical... Warships had armor pretty much exactly like this because you just you want most of it wood so it floats But you also want metal or iron steel so the thing is bulletproof so Keeping that in mind so over here. There's not many choices like we'll get into the significance of like all these other things in Another video probably but for now that's not the right one for now We're just focusing on the four meter beams because that's the baseline of things most craft, if you build smart, will be made out of 4 meter beams, so... Reinforced decking, so... What is this? This is halfway between... Uh, wood and metal, and metal we haven't covered yet, but don't worry, we will. This is, well... Well, as it says right there, it's a decking piece that combines the classic look of wood with some of the protection of metal, so... The health is... 
1590, so already it's got over 400 health. Like 410 exactly, I can do math occasionally. It's got 410 more health than wood, it's got armor of 9, so fragments do not do full damage to this thing. Armor class of 9 is oh, it's okay, it's not amazing, so... This thing is uh, still... yeah, well it's got 3 times the armor class of wood, which is much better. It's weight of 100, so it's quite a bit heavier than wood, with its weight of 40. Material cost of 12, so it's about f 3 times as expensive. And I just noticed the heat penetration thing, that's fine, we'll talk about heat in the next video. EMP susceptibility of 0%, so just like wood, it doesn't get damaged by EMP. And protective drainage, 50. So it has half the protective drainage of wood, which is fitting because it's half wood, half metal. And, like, metal conducts electricity, makes sense. And it also has about half the buoyancy of wood of uh, plus 51.9. So this stuff floats. But it doesn't float uh, incredibly well, so if you have an entire ship built out of this thing, it will float. But it won't be able to compensate for heavy materials like, well, guns tend to be the heaviest thing that weighs a ship down apart from uh, heavy armor surrounding important bits. So this is mainly for decks. This is so you can have an armored deck that looks pretty. And if you are base, if you don't, ah, it's good for... Well, it's good for when you want wood, well, you want something halfway between wood and metal. So you want something that floats and does reasonable EMP protection, but you also want it to be somewhat tough. So that's reinforced decking, reinforced wood for you. So what is next on the list? So, aha, now we can talk about metal. And you can probably already guess like what the most efficient thing here is. Metal is great stuff. And for the most part, if you want an armored anything in this game, you'll be using a lot of metal, because why is that? So, it's a score is uh, well, quite a bit high, a reasonable bit higher than a reinforced wood. The overall score is 924.9, so we're getting really efficient here in how these blocks work, and the health is the yardstick by which other uh, things uh, are judged, and I just realized beams receive an extra 50% health due to their increased structural integrity. So you can't actually times this by four and get that and get the health of this. So sorry about that. Still focusing on beams though. So metal beam health of 2,100, which is pretty darn good. Armor 15, which is great. It means that uh, when when you compare what uh, explosions and fragments do to wood and then compare what it does to metal, the difference is like night and day. It is so... metal is just so much better at taking damage than wood is. And weight of 160, so it's reasonably heavy, which makes sense because it's, well, it's solid steel. Uh, one by four meter blocks of it. Material cost of 20, so it costs the same as alloy, but is far more focused on being tough rather than being lightweight and being buoyant. In fact, its buoyancy is minus seven. So, in terms of this game, that means its buoyancy is uh, almost neutral. Neutral buoyancy is zero. So it does sink, but it actually doesn't sink that fast. So if you use air pumps, so these things, well, air pumps, we're on a fortress, so I can't place any, but uh, air pumps uh, with metal, it makes a perfectly uh, floatable craft. Or if you're really feeling lazy, you can use helium pumps, which uh, does a similar thing, but uh, yeah, it's just, just somewhat more effective and requires a fully enclosed space as opposed to air pumps, in which you just need a floor and walls and the thing will float. So, metal is great stuff. So, why does it get a score of uh, 924.9? It's because it's tough, basically. It is one of the better things. I think it has possibly the best armor to material cost of anything in this game. So, yeah, this is, when we talk armor, the default is metal. That is your default armor for anything because, well, steel armor. It's like, what else are you going to use except no substitutes? Except, there are substitutes you can use. And moving on, you get to -da 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 -da, the most efficient structural block in the entire game. And that is stone. Which is a little bit weird, because stone, in real life, has never really been used for uh, making ships, for very good reason. It's uh, brittle, it's heavy, and blah blah blah. 
But in this game, stone is amazing, if really, really ugly. So, in fact, I'm just gonna paint that quickly to something less annoying. What? See, it's hard to paint stone because it's like friggin... Yeah, I don't know. That looks awful, okay. So, pure white stone looks somewhat reasonable, although I am being blinded by that a little bit. I'm being blinded by that too. Bright yellow? No. Ugh. Ew. Bright purple. Sure, why not? No, let's go with... Uh, well, so much for that. See, stone is ugly. That's one of the main problems that people have with it. It's really... it's kind of gross. But, any case, so the stone has a whopping structural efficiency index of... 1254.05 and the main reason for that is if we look at the stats also stone only comes in two blocks that apparently is soon to change in an update we'll get lots of different sizes of stone maybe even stone slopes but yeah you have the one meter block and you have the four meter block which does which is okay because you use four meter blocks for almost anything and probably for building structures and really tough ships because the main reason that stone is the most efficient uh, material with this formula that I made up is because it has all possibly the best health to cost ratio of any block in this game. It is really, really good. You get a huge amount of health for not much money. So the health of 1,800 for a 4 meter beam, armor of 7, so it fragments don't do full damage, but only just don't do full damage. Weight of 160, so it weighs as much as metal, I believe. So, what's this? Yeah, 160. It weighs as much as metal. And material cost of 8, but it is way cheaper than metal. It's less than half the cost. And EMP susceptibility 0%, and that's important. Like, doesn't get damaged by EMP, and protected range 100. So it has identical stats to wood in that sense, because it's just EMP... More than any other uh, material, EMP has trouble getting through stones because, well, protective range 100, damage is hard to get through. And it also has the same buoyancy of metal, so minus 7 is almost neutral, which means you can still easily make things that float when they're made mostly of stone, particularly if you layer on alloy or wood or use lots of air pumps. So, why is this stuff so great? Well, I've mentioned already that uh, it's got 8 material, for 1,800 health. Compare that to metal, which is 20 material for 2,100, you can see the rate that alone means that stone is very, very efficient just for packing on hit points. Armor's not fantastic, but stone does really, really well when you pack stronger materials behind it. So on that note, we're gonna move on to armor stacking, which is one of the most important things in this game to think about when you're armoring a craft. So. We're going to start with wood, and we're going to, damn it, and we're going to pull out an amazing tool. So, I'm going to turn the UI on for a second. So, that tool down there, number 9, is a debug tool showing the health and armor class of any block you pointed at. And so, if I pointed at this deck here, this, this deck has stupidly high armor class because the whole thing is made of heavy armor. But, if I point at this wood lock, you will see health of, what, 1080? Armor class of what the? Why did it change? All right, no, I know why it changed. Health of no, not that. Stop it. So AC of three, health of ten eighty, coordinates blah blah blah. So that is funny thing with beams is that they stack with themselves. So at least I think so. So AC of three, we do this. Boop, 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 boop. And here we go. Looking at it edgeways. These beams have much higher armor, so theoretically you could arrange beams edge on like this and you could like basically get armor for nothing. The problem with that is, is that, I'm jumping ahead of myself again, uh, why do I always do this? As soon as one of these beams get destroyed, you have a 4 meter hole in the side of your ship, a 4 meter deep hole. And that is uh, not good, so... Just immediately out of hand, we'll get uh, more details on that in a moment. I keep promising things in the future. I'm like, I don't know, I'm like a bad fortune teller. So, you see uh, things like this. This is not a good way to arrange armor, so we're arranging it like this. And so, you can see immediately, that's great, I have the tool out here. So, armor class is 3, that's the standard armor, and then armor stacking. Watch what happens when I do this. 
suddenly the armor's doubled. What happens? So armor stacking is a mechanic in this game where layered armor is more effective than single blocks, than single layered blocks. So it makes sense, right? You have a thicker thing, it uh, takes more damage. It's kind of kind of inspired by real life, uh, I guess, composite armor, where you have multiple thinner layers rather than one big thick layer, except this kind of is one big thick layer. So, in any case, so the formula for this is gonna pop up on screen right now, and it goes something like this. So you have your first layer, and then the second one behind it gives, or lends, I guess, 100% of its armor to the first block, which is why when you look at it from this angle, it has six armor. Actually, slightly more than that. I'm not sure why that is. I think uh, wood actually has slightly more armor than uh, three, but it's just, it isn't shown in the tooltip. So, 100% of this armor is given to this. Armor of six. So, already, like, uh, Frags do half damage to this thing, just by having two layers, so that's really important. Whenever possible, have double layers, at least, of structural blocks. So because it makes a huge difference. It means that uh, this block in front essentially, well, takes noticeably, like, uh, more damage before it gets destroyed. So, but on to the efficiency score. The second layer gives 100%, the third layer gives 85%, so... What is the... let's do this. So, AC of 6. Now it's AC of 8.55, so not quite 9, but... So it's given about 85% of its AC. I'm taking too long explaining this, aren't I? So, that's the second layer, the third layer. So, second layer, third layer behind the first one is 70%, so... Now we're up to 10. And then the fifth layer is 55%. We're up to 12. Sixth layer is 40%. We're up to 13.53. I just lost my place. God damn it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sixth layer, 40%. Seventh layer, 25%. And eighth layer is 10%. And so is the ninth layer. So. That is, I believe, that, yeah, so armor stacking really makes a difference because now this wooden beam out in front almost has the same armor class as a beam of metal. And that's just because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 blocks of this stuff. That seems a bit much. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I believe that it only stacks so far, so if I get rid of this, yeah. No real difference. And then I get rid of that. No real difference. It only stacks up to eight times, so I don't know what I was doing. I lost count several times, so 40 more 5. 1, 2, 5. There we go. So it up. Stacks up to eight times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Shouldn't change from here. 14 point thing. Yep, so it stacks up to eight times. So. The maximum effective armor in this game is 8 meters thick. However, going 8 meters thick is... Well, you can see already just how bloody thick this thing is. That is that is a lot of materials. And this is just, like, you can imagine what will happen if you use more expensive materials than this. The cost will soar tremendously. And you get diminishing returns. So, what was again? 100%, 85%, 70%, 55%. 40%, 25%, 10%, uh, and then hypothetical 10% back here. Stacking armor beyond five layers really doesn't do much. So, if we have here, 14.57, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whoop, 12. And that's about as much armor as you want to stack at any time, because anything other than that is just material inefficient. It's just you're not getting much bonus armor, for your money. So yeah, that's armor stacking, that's important, and you can... This uh, means that you can have great block synergy, because if I say... Here we have our lovely piece of wood. I'm just gonna do that, actually I'm gonna do... This. So here we have... Well, let's get rid of that. So we have our armor value of 6 right here. What, hap what happens if we put metal behind this? Oh, it's 18! That is amazing. So, generally speaking, with armor, you want to put heavy, well, better armored 
more expensive stuff behind cheaper, spongy stuff that you don't mind getting destroyed. Generally speaking, that's a good idea. It's just, well, it just makes it so much more effective. One layer of metal, just, you've already got better armor stacking than if you put five layers of wood behind you. So your armor can be thinner, your ship can be smaller and quicker and lighter and just all that stuff. So using blocks, well, is very clever. So if we do this and say if we... This is really bog standard armor right here is wood, stone, metal. So armor class of three, boop. Now it's armor class of 22.84, which is great. This is not easy to destroy at all. You need a real overkill for that, so... In that sense, we're going to demonstrate with this, and I hope I still have the prefab saved here. So here we have... We're moving on to the part of the game where I explained why cross-hatching is a waste of time. So, here we have a target range set up. Inspired heavily by a wellness fortress, which unfortunately is only going to show up in the next video. My throat's already feeling ragged from talking so much. So, what do we have here? We have... Uh, beams. Metal beams, four meters long, uh, beautifully painted, uh, the way a well-known likes to do it. So you can see that these are horizontal beams, arranged like so. Four meters thick, so the armor value is pretty darn good. It's got an armor rating of hovering about 50. Incidentally, armor... Uh, it's very clever the way armor stacking works in this, because it's very, very precise. Uh, the direction that uh, the armor bonus is given so if I look there so I'm probably I'm hovering right on that corner right there there's nothing behind that immediate corner of that metal block there so the armor rating is 15 move just a little bit over to the right oops it's jumped up to 36.9 and that's because there's stuff immediately behind it so the armor stacking the way this in this game works it's just it's not enough just to stack uh, stuff behind other stuff. It needs to be stacked in a certain direction. So whatever uh, rate the thing is firing at you, it's firing through multiple layers of stuff to get at whatever it's shooting at. So on that note, you will see that uh, for as t this is incredibly tough, by the way. Four meters of metal is a lot of armor. It is, well, bog standard armor, really. Like you see this quite often, like uh, in both faction craft and what people build. And it also, well, we're going to test fire with this so you see what damage looks like. So if we do that, and there's a, we're going to put a tiny bit of a delay on there so we can see the fun happen. So there we have our, remember our massive sabot round? Massive can nope, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, Rambot. God damn it. Let's do that again. You ruined everything. I forgot to turn off the repair thing. Anyway, test. And... Boom. So that's four meters of metal, and this monster slug just went straight through there with absolutely no problem because it has high enough armor penetration that it can do pretty decent damage to all this. Remember, uh, AC of about 50, and which means that even though that slug does less than half, it does a lot of kinetic damage. So it has plenty to spare and goes straight through. So how many layers did? How many layers does it take to stop this thing? I've worked it out before, and it takes an awful lot. In fact, let's try that. Let's try and stop this. The main point of this is just telling you, uh, informing you how best to arrange armor. So, if I do that... Can 8 meters of metal stop it? Which is stupid overkill, by the way. Never do this. So... Exactly there. See, armor hasn't gone on that much. It is about 70, so... Can we make magic happen? We can. So, this time it got stopped uh, two layers in. So that's how effective armor stacking is. It stops this absolute monster of a kinetic shell from getting through. That being said, this is not very efficient because, uh, well, it's 8 meters of metal. This is expensive, so that cost of... How many metal beams is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That was 4 meters thick. 7 times 4 is 28 metal beams. That doesn't look right. Well, not 28 metal beams. It's 28 times 4... 
Oh god, time's length. I, I, I can't math, I'm too hot. Sorry. So in any case, stacked armor is the way to go. But, however, so let's uh, delete all the stuff. So we go here. Mm. Didn't need to do that. Do, 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 do. Nope, stop it. Stop it. So here's where we just endlessly talk and shoot at things. So, why should you not use horizontal beams? And I have a wee table here full of my experiments, which I don't think I have time to replicate right now. Why is this bad? Well, if this is the side of a ship and it's uh, the long bit is pointing facing that way, so the bow or bow or boogie is pointed that way, not sure why it's the boogie, and the stern is this way, if you have beams laid out like this, what you get is a four meter wide hole straight through your ship. Now this is a problem because shells tend to vary slightly more in their horizontal axis rather than their vertical axis. So what this means is that you get a nice wide hole for stuff to slip through if you get a hole this far. You also have a lot of, uh, from the side here, if you have anything coming in from an angle that's not a perfect right angle, you have more beams in the way of things, which might sound like a good thing, but it's more beams in the way for the same armor stacking bonus that you get for using different layouts of beams. So, we're going to immediately compare that with something else. And that something else is vertical beams, which incidentally is the thing that you probably should be using all the time. This is a lot of vertical beams. So that's why it's more expensive. Vertical beams are not more expensive than horizontal beams. That would be silly. So how is this going to stand up to a uh, 500mm kinetic round? Well, the spoiler alert is that it doesn't appear to do any better in that sense. Because it goes straight through. However... Looking at this, this is a much narrower hole, because remember, shells tend to spray like from side to side a little bit more than up and down. In the case of a ship, up and down is more likely to miss anyway. It's more likely to wing straight over or undershoot or something like that. So this means you have a nice narrow hole instead of a great big wide one. So vertical beams are good for that. And also... I actually should have been talking about this in the next video. You get the same armor stacking bonus if, say, say a shell's coming in like, well, let's uh, have a metal thing here. What is a good metal thing? Well, no, a thing. So, like this. So, the slope on here, pretend that is a shell coming in. So, it goes like, but also, like on this angle. So. Which shells tend to do. This kind of uh, test setup is misleading because shells almost never come in at perfect right angles like this. There's always... They tend to fire... Well, they tend to come a little bit down or they tend to come a, a little bit up because that's just how arcing shells work. So, in any case, if a shell comes in like this, what it means is that it's going to run straight into that armor class of 50 and there are four beams in the way. Compare that to... So just uh, do this on the top here. Four beams in the way, as opposed to... Jeez, that's loud. So we go here, down slope, as opposed to 50 meters of armor. And there is... Let's see, we go here. There is one... One, two, three, four, five, six... Almost, like, lots more. So four, if it's a 45 degree angle. Which again, sounds like a good thing. It's not, because it means you lose more blocks at once if you get shot at. And also there's a weird uh, kind of feature with that. Basically, hor vertical beams mean more armor class uh, in a smaller space with less blocks. So that's why it's efficient. Now we get onto the thing that everyone wants to know is cross-hatched armor. And I'm covering that in this video simply because people keep talking about it and trying to tell me that it's really good and it's like, you know, you should use it all the time. And the answer, short answer to that is no, you should not because it's not much better than any other thing. And well, here's why. So here we have our prefab of cross-hatched metal. So it's two vertical layers and two horizontal layers. And 
Spoiler alert again, for this big kinetic shell that we're using as a test here, this doesn't do any better, because the armor stacking is no different. Like, if we go here, it's still 4 meters of metal, and still about 53, getting close to 60. Yep, there's 60 right there. So, yeah, just no actual real difference in armor stacking. In fact, there is none. And uh, you'll see that when this thing fires, it goes straight through. Now, where people say that this armor is good is because it leaves smaller holes. Because that is a one by one hole looking through there, as opposed to the four meter wide hole with horizontal beams, or the four meter tall hole with vertical beams. And so you should think that's better, right? That's automatically better. This ruins the armor stacking of this armor, because this beam right here was providing support to these beams on either side of it. Now that they are, it is gone, the armor class is 15 again. So all that's really done as soon as you're past the first layer and started to destroy the second is that this whole wide section here is weakened. And remember, shells in From the Depths have an annoying habit of not being particularly accurate. They tend to spray all over the place, which means the odds of you getting hit repeatedly in the same tiny spot over and over again is not very good. It is just the odds of a shell just whistling straight through here into there is not ideal. Well, not ideal, the wrong word, so it's not likely. So what's more happened is that it gets hit repeatedly around this general space and it just gets weaker and weaker and weaker until you have a gigantic hole in the side of your armor. And that's borne out by the testing I've done. I have a lovely table in here, so with this 500 meter slug, uh, what happens with uh, horizontal, vertical, and cross-hatched beams is that it just goes straight through. Four meters of metal, straight through, nothing. With frag, it's a similar story, so I will... Should I... No, I don't have time to demonstrate that now. I'll just read out what's on here. Future me, put the results on the screen. So, with frag, there's a 500 millimeter frag round that looks like this. So, inertial fuse, frag, frag, very big, very scary. Lots of fragment damage, lots of fragments. Uh, it takes three shots each, and so no real difference there. With high explosives, so a shell that looks like this, what happens is that, that's a lot of explosive damage, is that that's where cross-hatching seems to do a better job, because what happens is, is that this block gets destroyed, so it gets destroyed, and these blocks are less exposed to the high explosive spread, so each one of these beams only takes, because the dis the thing with beams is that if an explosion hits here, it damages all four points of the beam at once, so it inflicts full explosive damage here, 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 here. It's still better to use beams, though, because they get that health bonus right here. Extra 50% health due to increased structural integrity. It's still better against explosives than using smaller blocks, so. It blows up here, It and if it hits repeatedly in the same spot, it damages these slightly less. But then what happens is that this block, when it gets destroyed, there's an explosion leak in here. An explosion seeping behind armor blocks, which you don't really get with other forms of armor. So if you get, say, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, you get vertical beams, what happens is, whoop, and that's all it is, this thing gets full damage, whoop. You get a deeper hole. I will admit, you get a deeper hole, and in terms of armor, that's actually quite bad. However, remember, explosive rounds in particular, unless they're very fast, they're never going to hit in the exact same spot. Well, never. Less likely. And these guys, on either side, even though there's two layers in now, these guys are still fine. These guys still get uh, the full armor stacking bonus of the ones blocks behind them. It's not compromised. And the same is true for horizontal beams. So, you go here... One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So if this guy gets destroyed, whoop. Actually, he needs neighbors. One, two, three. These guys over here, they still have full scale protection from the blocks behind them. So cross hatching is one of those things that's good in theory, but uh, the overall integrity of your armor suffers because of it. And moving on with that, so in case you're wondering, it takes. 10 shots of this particular shell to get through 4 meters of metal with both horizontal and vertical layout. It takes 13 in order to get through this cross hatching. That sounds good, except there's a much bigger hole left, and I would show that, but 
Like, that is science you can do on your own if you have this game. Just try it out. Have, have a science day. It's fun. And then you get into where this uh, cross-hatching armor gets really bad because... It, uh, thump damage tends to do a number on it, so, hollow point. So, thump damage is something I haven't mentioned yet. Thump damage is a special kind of damage that, uh, well, the w incidentally I should mention that the From the Depths wiki is being finally updated again, and it's providing useful, relevant, up-to-date information, so go check that out if you're confused. Thump damage basically is damage that spreads once it's destroyed a block. So, if we have our uh, crosshatch stuff here, bleh, what would happen is hollow point round hits here. It destroys this block, and any excess energy, kinetic energy, is spread to surrounding blocks. So, actually, this, let's show you that. So, let's do this, and not that. Why am I, what am I doing with my life? What am I doing with my life? Fudge, I didn't mean to do that. We're going to have to wait bloody millions of years now. Or not, we can just do this. So, way thump damage works. Remember the kinetic shell that uh, punched straight through there? Uh, thump damage doesn't do that. It does this. So it destroyed one block, but also destroyed and damaged the blocks on either side of it, including that heavy armor beam right there. So, yeah, that's why really big thump heavy shells, uh, things like Hesh or Hollow Point, they hurt. They hurt a lot. So, keeping that in mind, what happens uh, with thump damage is I shouldn't have done that actually. So repeated shots of it, uh, remembering that thump damage ignores stacked armor. If it hits even close to cross hatched armor, so immediately that's two beams uh, destroyed. And then do it again. Oh boy, look at the size of that hole already. We're not even all the way through. So, now we have a nice gap in here. And just look at... There's so much armor compromised right now. There's... Going here. Oh dear. There's this whole sheet of metal that now has, like, no armor stacking bonus at all. Simply because, well, hash and also explosive damage can get behind there and takes out blocks like this. That's... Not good. And uh, one more shot. I can't see due to the smoke. So now we've got a massive hole in here. And one more. Incidentally, in case you're wondering, Hollow Point took three shots to get through. Well, no, actually, interesting, really. So now we have a massive hole. And in fact, I think. Okay, no, no, this isn't going to fall off. So. Okay, so. Crosshatching took three shots to get through this wall, as opposed to... Oh no, it took four shots, sorry. Did it? Yeah, it did. So, four shots to get through this wall, as opposed to vertical beams, which take three, and horizontal beams, which took two. That sounds good, but ragged hole right here. In fact, I'm going to demonstrate that with the vertical beams. Two, two, damn it. Two, one, two... Just gotta wait for the metal to sink. Do do do, do do do. Kind of sucks how thump damage ignores armor stacking. It make. So here's an interesting thing. So now we're two layers in already, and uh, took out a heavy armor block underneath it. That's nice. Thump tends to travel a long beam. So what you get is, as before you get this long, narrow hole. And armor is not compromised on either side. This thing still has 50 armor. These things still have 30 and 43. Kind of spreads it out a little bit. And let's see, does it take two more shots? Be hilarious if I'm proven wrong. It took two shots, what the hell? Inconsistent results. All right, so this looks bad, right? In fact, it is bad. I can look right through there. Incidentally, a target protector would have worked better on this gun than laser pointers, but any mind. So, what do we have here? We have uh, two shots immediately going straight through. Bad, but on the other side, the arm is fine, except for this one, which is a. Uh, what the hell? What is going on there? 
Do you have no friends? Oh, you have no friends. See, even with this it kind of happened. But generally speaking, the hole is nice and narrow, and it's not going to get through. And it doesn't have uh, less compromising on its side. So, that's crosshatched for you. It's, uh, it's better with the very first shot that lands on it, but it gets... I don't know. The overall integrity of your armor is weakened because of it, and it only does slightly better against uh, thing against incoming damage than other la layers anyway. So don't bother. Just do not bother. It' not really worth it because it's it's annoying. Well, that's vertical beams I'm pointing out right now. Vertical beams are just they're easier. They've got all kinds of fun things to talk about. Cross hatching just is not really worth it in my book. People are probably still going to disagree with it, even though I've done the science, and unfortunately, this I've been talking for an hour, and I don't have time to do all the science again. But feel free to try it for yourself. Four meters of beams, cross-hatched, horizontal, vertical, point a big APS gun at it, see what happens. Okay, I think that... <coughs> yep, I've been talking too long. So that does it for part one of this, uh, of this, of this video. Rest assured, there will be more shooting of uh, armored walls in the next one because we get to take a tour of a wellness armor fortress, just showing off like more specialized forms of damage. So more thump, more high explosive, uh, heat, hash, uh, frag, all that kind of stuff. What different armor layers and types do is going to be a good time. Hopefully, see you then. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll see you next time in the From the Depths armor tutorial. And if uh, you have any questions regarding armor in From the Depths, uh, be sure and ask away in the comments, and I'll probably answer you immediately, but I'll also put it in the next video, if I can and if it fits. Okay, everyone got it? Have a nice day. Farewell.